So here is the home hub Mark III and it is a type A. Um, I'm not sure if they have a type B or a type C whether they improved it any but uh, it is really really poor. But uh, before I actually start taking this to pieces to have a look inside and see how we can modify it I'm really thinking that this shape at the front here really lends itself to be uh, a backward antenna so I'm kind of thinking to have a directional backward antenna at the front here and uh, possibly a dipole antenna coming out from the side so uh, we get some omnidirectional from the dipole and we can have some directional connectivity with the biquad and if there is enough room inside for a biquad it will make it uh, quite a powerful antenna at the front and uh, we shouldn't have any problems directing that into the house to get a uh, solid internet connection. So before we actually mod the router I thought it would be a good idea to have a look to see how powerful it is to start off with. I'm just using the Wi-Fi card that's built into my laptop. I haven't got an alpha card connected and it's really really poor. Um, so far at the moment it's hovering around very low 2%, 4%. Uh, the highest it's been is 10% which is uh, nowhere near good enough to uh, connect to. So we'll use this as a baseline and we'll have a look and um, see how good it is after we've uh, modded the antennas. So to take this up to pieces it's really quite easy that front comes off and there's a couple of rubber feet here I've taken the rubbers off and there's a couple of uh, Phillips screws and just remove them and then we'll pop this front off. So once you've removed those two screws it's just uh, some clips on the sides holding it in place once you get one side off it comes away quite easily and uh, I haven't taken the actual PCB of the router out yet but I can already see We've got um, PCB antennas here which is probably why it's so weak. So as soon as we take it out of the casing we can see straight away we've got two PCB antennas, one here one here. And we've got a couple of test points here. Now one thing that we will have to do to modify this to put a proper antenna in is actually get rid of these resistors that are here and here. and those resistors need to be removed what they actually do is a similar job to a loading coil and they allow the PCB antennas although they're a little, lot shorter than a standard antenna they will uh, allow them to stay resonant at 2.4 gigahertz because of the resistors it works in much the same way not as good but uh, it's how uh, manufacturers get around this and uh, put the PCB antennas in to uh, save costs so what I'm going to do is remove these two test points here and hopefully we can uh, completely bypass these resistors without having to remove them. And of course here is the Afros chipset and it's uh, covered by a can there so we can also use that can as our ground plane and we can just see the actual driven element part of the tracers coming out into these test points here and here. I've gone ahead and removed the can so we can see the actual tracks coming from these two chips here which control the antennas and I've removed the actual test point here which has done the job of severing this track from the actual ground plane because the PCB antennas are like a closed loop and if you check continuity with the shield here with the antenna here you get um, a buzzing sound which uh, means they actually join together so severing, removing should I say that test point there has severed this track and this track is no longer connected to the ground plane on the PCB so this small resistor here we normally will have to remove that but it's so small what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a solder blob over the top of it to uh, stop the resistor from working so uh, it also gives us a nice solder point that we can solder to and I'm going to go ahead and remove this test point here as well and the resistor that you can see there I'm going to put a solder blob over the top of that so uh, it will disable it and then uh, we can solder directly onto those two solder blobs and I've found out that this is the trace because basically I get my continuity meter and put it on the edge of that resistor there it goes all the way back into this chip here and same with that one goes back into that chip there and to actually remove these 
test pads it's a lot easier to actually just use some side cutters here just gently rock it backwards and forwards let friction break those legs and it'll just pop off so I've just done this one and sod's law the actual resistor just uh, came away sticking to the end of my soldering iron so uh, no harm there I've just uh, tinned up just there so we can attach some coax to it later so I'm guessing that um, this second one will most likely come away as well but we'll see yeah just pop straight off so there gives us something to actual solar onto and of course these um, this is really really small components we're dealing with here and this is probably the hardest part of this modification so the coax I'm going to be using for this is the type of coax you get inside a laptop now this coax isn't particularly shielded what it does it actually relies on the tight weave of the outer copper to uh, act as a shield for the inner driven element part of this coax so although you get some really nice flexibility your offset is that it's not as well shielded but hopefully because we're going to keep the runs really really short it uh, shouldn't affect us in any real way but for actually soldering it onto these solder points that I've created what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that last because we always run the risk of snapping them off while moving things around so what I'm going to do first is create a dipole antenna to give us some omnidirectional coverage and then I'm going to create a bicord antenna so just make a simple dipole antenna a 25mm length of tube in which I've got from one of those telescopic antennas and I've just cleaned it up at the edges and try and clean it up a little bit inside as well because I'm going to be tinning that to get some solder in there and once I've tinned it up just feed it over the top of the coax and the outer coax here I'm going to just push all that down into here and then flood solder so we've got a nice connection and then this is our ground plane part of the antenna and this will be our driven element part of the antenna so essentially this uh, little antenna is uh, virtually finished I mean if we just trim the driven element here sticking out at the top down to 25 millimeters we have got a simple dipole but uh, I want a little bit more range from this dipole antenna so we're going to actually construct a driven element using a loading coil and I'm going to actually solder that onto this now if you want to know about these now to make these kind of simple dipole antennas check out my video on simple dipole antennas and uh, I'll put a link in the description so essentially that's our extended range dipole antenna finish so I'm now going to move on to the bicord part of this build so I've made the element for the uh, bicord antenna and I'll put a couple of links below to uh, bicord antennas that I've built in the past so uh, you know exactly what I've done here but I've connected the coax cable up directly and the center element of the coax I've soldered on to this point here and then the shield part of the coax to this point here and then you get a closed loop antenna and the bicord antenna is a really really powerful directional antenna so I've also had to bend this slightly as well in order to fit it into place here it's going to sit on the front here and hopefully it won't block any of the lights from illuminating the controls there and I've just had to dremel out here in order to fit it in so it uh, fits quite snugly so I've fixed the bicord to the front of the router and I've just epoxied the edges down to hold them in place and as far as the coax is concerned I've soldered the ground on to here and the driven element the center part of the coax onto there and if I flip it over you can see the driven element has still got its plastic sleeve on so it's isolating it from this which is going to be soldered to the uh, reflector which is the ground and the reflector it's just a piece of this um, 
copper tape and I've just trimmed it down to fit in this space here and what I'm going to do is if I feed the coax through I'm going to bring this here through that hole and then solder it down onto the uh, copper tape here and also don't forget to isolate this reflector from the electronics because uh, when we put the PCB back in it's going to be pressing down on top of that so uh, you don't want any shorts so I've just used some clear tape and I've put a uh, couple of uh, layers on because some of those components on here are quite sharp so you don't want it piercing through so originally I was going to solder the uh, ground onto the ground plane of the shield here but uh, what I've done instead is I've just scraped away some of the solder mask from the old antennas and I'm actually going to use those as uh, the ground plane I've just put a little bit of tin here and the reason is because uh, when I come to solder this in place it will just lie quite nicely here and the outer coax I can uh, put plenty of solder on that and really solder it down to the uh, old antenna and then I've got the element part that will solder just onto where we've already put the uh, tin tin for where we remove that uh, resistor. So both antennas have been soldered onto the PCB and the dipole antenna just runs out here, drill the hole in the side and it goes out through the top there and then you've got your bicord coming in and feeding in here. So this is the hub all finished, we've got the dipole antenna on the side there and obviously the bi-quad in the middle so now we just snap this back into place and it'll cover the bi-quad up and there you go looks uh, pretty good so we'll plug it in and see how it compares to the first test we did so as you can see after the modification big improvement we've now got a signal up into the 80s remember it's about 45 meters away going through a couple of brick walls so I actually was a bit amazed how poor it was before the modification it's uh, not a good piece of equipment at all but um, I'll have a look on the graph and we've got a nice strong signal on the graph here and previously on the graph it uh, never even registered it barely registered at the bottom so hope you enjoyed this if you did please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you for the next video